Hey folks, uh, so today we're going to be looking at profiling um, WPCLI commands and cron events. Um, that's something that is, you know, usually a little bit more hidden, let's say, under the hood, so to speak, uh, when you're profiling web pages, like you're typically focused on the performance there, and there's a lot of tools, you know, I've just done the video on um, performance profiling with um, flame graphs, um, which we can see here, for example. However, um, I've recently been working on some custom CLI commands for migrating content and data and being able to profile what's happening, you know, to speed that, um, those kind of things up is pretty useful. And the same for cron events as well. Quite often in WordPress, when we schedule cron events, um, it's a case of you know, send it to the background to get processed and we don't really look at necessarily how long it takes, how performant it is, things like that. Um, so that uh, I think is an important thing as well. So um, I'm just going to run over the tools that we are using to, to be able to do this. It essentially comes in two parts. Um, to actually do the profiling, I have a um, PHP file here in, this is with an Altis local setup. Again, could be anything, could be any WordPress um, Set up basically this is just including this file very early. You could include this file from your WP config PHP, for example, if you weren't using Altis. Um, and what this does is hooks into when we run WP CLI and it's going to use the Exma profile um, to capture a profile of the running CLI process. It also has something a little more smart as well. So it will handling um, cancelling of the CLI command. So if you press control C to like abort the CLI command early, we're still going to get a profile for that. Um, so that's pretty useful when we're running long CLI commands. We don't necessarily wait for them, you know, want to wait for them to complete or they're stuck and we don't know why. That's when you could enable profiling and then you can kind of quit out of it at any point and you'll still have a profile that you can see. Um, so as per the previous video on flame graphs, um, this is using the Exma PHP extension. Um, if you have Altis local server set up, you have that PHP extension already and you're not going to need to install anything. If um, you are running you know, uh, a local setup otherwise, then you'll need to install uh, that PHP extension. So um, I also have the WPC like profile PHP file, that like early include file on um, GIST if uh, anybody needs to pull it from there. Um, so again, that file is just included like on the beginning of any CLI request. You see at the top, it will just say WPCLI isn't defined, it's basically a no op. Um, so as well as that, to demonstrate you know, how this works, I just have made a very simple MU plugin, which adds a generate new posts command, and that's just gonna like do some stuff basically. Uh, so we can actually generate the profiles and look to optimize that. Um, so as I'm running this from um, local server, then uh, I will be running it via Composer Server CLI, um, but you would just, uh, I, I guess actually, let's just run it in a shell. Can we do that? And then I'll pass the URL. There we go. Okay, you see my custom CLI command is there. Um, so, um, so if we were to run that right now, see if it's gonna generate, try and generate 10,000 posts and I have a progress indicator. And I can see that that's gonna take Looks like around 11, 11 minutes or something like that. Um, I've just canceled that. I'm going to let that complete. And then here I have my where my posts are being imported. So now I've got 1,080, for example. So um, that's the CLI command. That's the bootstrap. So how do we actually use this and generate some profiles? So if I run my command, um, I have obviously, because I've got my um, custom PHP file that's being included, the usage for this is to pass dash dash profile and then provide a path for the profile to be written out. Um, so I'm going to do that. Let's say profile equals trace.txt or something. Um, I guess we do that. Okay, so now I'm letting it, you know, begin to run because I need to collect the trace, collect, you know, the information on what is happening exactly. Um, so I'll just cancel out of that and then I see my trace file here. Now that's not much use. So how do we visualize that or how, how do we kind of understand what is actually happening? So there's a useful, um, oops, Eatscope.app, a very useful web app for reading um, a collapse trace. That's uh, exactly what we've generated there. So I'm going to select my file, and now I have the trace of everything that is happening um, within that CLI command. Again, I cancelled it out early because I don't want to let the whole thing run. It's going to take a long time. I'm probably getting the important data that I need straight away. Um, in Speedscope, you have also a way to visualize the data a bit differently. Um, ultimately, you can have time order, which is left to right, the order of things, or you can say left heavy, where it's going to bunch up everything um, with the, the kind of um, longest things on the left and to the slowest on the right. Um, I would say for this kind of thing, left heavy is kind of useful because we've got a lot of iteration happening and we're going to get maybe a more fragmented view on time order. 
So I can see obviously my run command here is the thing that is taking all of the time. Um, and then I understand that my WP insert post within my loop is the thing that takes all the time within that, which is surprising. It's not really doing anything else. Um, now, interestingly here, I can see that transition post status is actually the slowest thing within that by like quite a margin. See, there's a WP insert query there. Set post categories is taking quite a bit of time. Um, so what's happening with this transition post status? Uh, it looks like there, I have the WP stream plugin activated locally, and it's actually WP stream hooking into transitioning post status when you create a post that is taking a huge amount of time. You know, this, this may depend, but in my case, I just want to generate a lot of posts. I don't really need those posts to be inserted into stream, for example. Like it's quite typically when you're running migrations, you don't necessarily need um, all of the, you know, audit log events that might be coming with the stream. Um, so I guess at this point, I would usually look to kind of optimize this. Maybe I don't actually want to run this function. I'm not totally sure with stream whether there is a, um, a way to short circuit that, a way just to turn it off for a, for a given command or something. Um, this is the function that is running callback transition post status. Um, I can see here if the post type is in the get excluded post types, it won't run. So I think just for the purpose of this demo, I'm just going to um, short circuit this by adding post type post to this array. So when you run the CLI command, I'll say add, uh, say add filter on this and uh, I won't bother annotating any of this, and let's just add types equals post. So that should mean um, that when I'm running this CLI command, I'll hook into the excluded post types and add post post type, uh, just because I want to understand, or I, I don't really want to run that, and I also want to you know, see if I can speed things up. Um, so now I'll run generate posts again. Oh, I guess I did something wrong there. Uh, argument two, must be type array, and I'll give, and I didn't return my types. Oops, okay, let's try that again. Okay, I'm not sure if we can see. So you can see the time now for generating those 10,000 posts. I mean, it's actually gone down by about 40, 50% or something. But again, I've run this with profile. So I will just control C out to quit that. That will have updated that trace.txt. And now uh, let's have a look here. I'll just reload. And now let's see, I've got a different profile. So now my transition post status is still doing some things. Um, update post count on transition post status, update term count. Okay, and publish hook is adding metadata for whatever reason. My set categories is taking time on update term counts. So again, I've sped it up by about 45% or something like that, but I can also see I've got time in update post counts and update term counts. Um, so for those of those that don't know, um, in WordPress, whenever you insert post or whenever you assign object uh, terms to a post like categories or post tags, Every time you add one, it will recalculate how many uh, total posts are in that term. Um, now, when we run migration commands, typically uh, there is a short circuit, a kind of optimization that we can provide to do that. We can say at the beginning, don't update any term counts when I set um, terms on post, and then right at the end, I can run a recount and calculate it. So I'm going to try doing that here just to see kind of what the impact is there. Um, I believe it is uh, defer term counting. I always forget which way around this is. Defer term counting, defer equals null. Defer is optional, enable it true. So I think I need to enable deferring, meaning this. Okay, so when I do that, when I now set my post terms in my loop, it's not gonna regenerate the counts for those posts every time. WordPress is generally, I would say, not optimized for inserting multiple things at once, which makes migrations and things quite slow. Um, because each iteration of WP insert post or set object terms does a lot of work that would be kind of repeated if that is within a loop. Um, someday I'd, I'd like to see WordPress, I'd actually uh, like a WP insert posts or something like some kind of high level API to do multiple, but alas, that doesn't exist yet. Um, so if I def defer term counting, what that will mean is my term counts are not updated, but after they are updated, I can run, um, I think it's term recount, uh, let's say post tag, for example. Um, so I would just need to run that after I run my migration command, or I guess I could do so as well, kind of code that in to run it here, but um, I'm not gonna bother going into that much depth. So now we've done that, um, let's have a look. Let's run it again um, with the profile again, and we'll see what kind of um, improvement, if any, we have there. So before I was getting around seven, now I'm getting, I'm getting some fives, um, but it um, doesn't seem significantly faster, but again, I'll cancel out. And then uh, let's switch back and 
Select that file again and left heavy. Let's see again. Um, update blog date on publish post. Okay, again, another thing that does not need to be running every time you run insert post. Um, update post count on transition post status. Okay, so again, you, you know, we could probably do optimizations around those things. I can see here that Yoast index evolves might be a thing like it would, it would be quicker typically um, to do all of the counting things at the end. So you insert all of the posts at once and then you do your counting at the end. So um, there's probably kind of the, the area that you can optimize, but you can see even with a couple of changes there, which I'm able to see from the flame graph, what is taking long. Um, and then I've put a short circuit in because I don't need WP stream. I probably wouldn't have known that that was happening if I didn't have a profile. And I've also done term counting. Now, a lot of people that have got experience with migration commands probably uh, know to add that. But again, without having the data of what actually is taking the time, um, then you're unlikely to, uh, to, to understand what is happening, right? You're just running it. It's taking time. You know, you can have migration commands at very large sites that can take up, you know, 24, 48 hours. If you're not profiling it, you may be missing something that is going to half that time, quarter that time quite easily. Um, so, so that's where, uh, something like a sampled flame graph, um, can, can help a lot. Now, this is for profiling custom CLI commands that you might be writing. I mean, you can even obviously profile uh, the input WP CLI commands this way to understand why they're taking a long time. Um, a nice kind of benefit of doing this as well is um, we can also uh, benchmark our or, or profile our um, cron events because WP CLI provides a way to run and list our cron events. So, for example, um, let's say we want to um, run the WC admin daily cron event, and we can capture a profile for that by passing profile. So if I run that once, okay, and now I will uh, load up that profile. See what is taking time. Obviously, you know, this isn't very long running um, cron event I can see in this case. So I have my load WordPress, which is all of the WPC live stuff, and then I have my run command and exit. But I see within that command, what is taking time? Well, it looks to me like, yeah, there's a uh, remote request that is taking you know, 36%, I think, of that time, you'd say. Um, so, I mean, it's kind of looks like mostly, to be honest, WP Remote Request. So I get insight straight away into how long and what is that cron task doing, this read data sources. Polar here, that seems to be what is taking the time. Um, so again, when you're writing your own cron events, typically you will not have insight very easily in how, you know, what what time are those cron events taking and what are they doing, what is quite, you know, what, what is slow, etc. And therefore, you're probably not going to bother optimizing it either. Um, if there's any... Um, lesson, I guess, from this series is like, I think that it's always worth um, performance optimizing. I think it's always worth profiling to understand what is, what is taking longer because it's always, I would say, relatively easy to reduce the time things take by a fairly substantial amount with very little effort. Obviously, it's diminishing the returns the, the longer you go on. But you see in here in a couple of minutes, by just having the profile and understanding what was taking time, I'm able to reduce that by maybe, you know, half time or something. So if that migration was going to take uh, 12 hours, you know, now it's a six hour migration after like maybe two or three minutes of work. Um, so having the tool set up really helps in being able to, um, you know, do those optimizations at a very cheap cost. Typically the problem is, is the tooling to measure what the performance is. Um, and that's why I just created this little CLI script to basically capture the, you know, capture the profile and give you the information. Um, didn't have to do much. You know, that's what, like 50, 75 lines of code or something. And then it already outputs a, a format that's uh, compatible with speed scope. So again, you don't have to you know, build it or write any visualizations or anything like that. Uh, very easy to do. So that's using um, sample profiles to understand why custom CLI commands, why WP CLI commands or cron events are slow. And um, I guess a couple of the techniques as well in terms of how to speed things up.